Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we are summarizing all of the deals that Palantir has completed in the months of January and December. December 2021, January of 2022, and a little bit from November of 2021. Now the reason I'm doing this is really to sort of showcase that the stock price does not really reflect the reality of the company, primarily because the company's been growing, the company's been expanding, the company's been doing a lot of crazy different things, new partnerships, new expansions, new contracts, new platforms, new uh, product offerings, lots of different stuff. This video is gonna summarize everything that's happened in the past two and a half months, uh, and hopefully it'll give you a better context of what a high growth tech company is doing that's trying to grow at 40, 50% year over year, and some of the moves that they're making. Again, I don't think the stock price reflects the reality of the company, and that means there is a massive buying opportunity here, because when something is undervalued based upon the potential of what they've been putting in place, the foundations they've been putting in place. That's why I think um, it's important to sort of analyze and recognize as an investor, like what's actually going on in the market and what's actually going on with the company that you're investing because you're buying a company, not just a stock. Okay, first deal. This happened around, what date did this happen? This actually happened December 2nd, 2021. Palantir secured a $43 million contract with the Space Systems Command. Now, the Space System Commands is kind of like this part of the federal government that uh, manages... What do they do? They manage the Air Force and they manage a lot of things that happen in space in terms of debris, national security, making sure that the International Space Station has all of its needs met, all of that stuff. Palantir secured a $43 million contract with them. I believe they were already working with them, but they like sort of uh, created an additional offering on their contract, an additional extension. And the platform they launched for them was called Warp Core. Now, I'm going to do a video in the future where we're sort of really breaking down Warp Core, but you can kind of think of it as like a full suite of products that is a centralized way for the Space Force to manage or the space force for the space systems command uh to manage all of the data that they have uh and to be able to analyze how to make better decisions within the operations of space and within how to communicate from earth to space um so warp core is the name of that program that palantir was able to create for the space systems command 43 million dollars not a bad deal. Next deal we have, Palantir signed a contract with Kinder Morgan. The value of this deal was not disclosed, but Kinder Morgan makes around $38 billion um, per year. Or Kinder Morgan is valued at $38 billion. They make about $11 billion of revenue. Very, very amazing company. Uh, this company does a lot of oil and gas work. They do the dirty work that no one wants to do, right, that we all complain about when it comes to climate change. These are the guys that are actually contributing to it, but it's the stuff that actually gives us the gas and oil to be able to, like, drive to 7-Eleven, right? Like, that stuff is actually necessary as we transition to renewable energy. So Kinder Morgan is a huge, huge multinational corporation when it comes to oil and gas and refinery of oil and gas and mining up a lot of minerals doing a lot of the infrastructure work that it takes to get the energy that is required in the North American, uh, in North America, and Pounder signed a contract with them. The contract they signed with them was mainly to work on their supply chains, their logistics, and their ability for their operations to be more efficient. Pounder worked with BP, which is an energy company, um, a couple months ago in their case study, and they saved them something like $40 million um, and, and just by operationalizing their supply chains and making it more efficient. So that deal with Kinder Morgan was a pretty decent deal for them. And, and it was right up their wheelhouse, given that they worked with energy companies before and uh, produce some good outcomes. Okay, next deal. This was December 21st. Palantir partnered with Dewpoint Therapeutics, uh, which is an innovative biotechnology company. Now, the real cool video or the real cool concept that I covered in the video when I did about Dewpoint Therapeutics is that they use a process of dilution to work with uh, cells and molecules and try to do enhanced drug discovery techniques based upon that process of dilution. So they like they, they, it's 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 some form of liquidating these molecules and then finding little intricacies within those molecules, taking them out, putting them in a system, and then that system ultimately spitting out some facts about those, those molecules, which helps them in their drug discovery process. Now, this drug discovery process hasn't been done for around, the, or has only been innovated for the past 12 years. So there's lots and lots of historical data around molecularization and dilution of, the mole, uh, of these molecules, but the actual implementation of it is only about about a decade old. So Palantir sort of partnered with them to be able to take all of the records of data that exists for this particular drug discovery project and combine it with the decade old level of research that they've done, which is fairly recent with implementing in this technology. And Dewpoint Therapeutics is able to use artificial intelligence at the core, which is what the press release kind of focused on, to be able to get to better conclusions and research and just enhance their R&D efforts to come up with uh, drugs that could actually help degenerative diseases that exist. So Another really really cool partnership. Not, numbers not exclusive on that, but just a good just a good way for the health and life sciences and drug discovery community to know that Palantir is working with a very innovative tech startup uh, or biotech startup that's trying to solve these problems. Gets their name out there, gets their name more into the drug community, and gets the name into a lot of other drug discovery companies that are a little that are, that are a little bit more legacy Merck, Pfizer, Johnson Johnson, etc. To potentially see the value of Palantir. 
Okay, then on December 27th, we had uh, a dossier leak. Uh, the dossier, or I'm probably saying it wrong, dossier, I'm definitely saying it wrong, but it's this basically like this article, not article. It's this like, it's this set of, 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 of uh, what do you call it, of documents that were released um, by this guy, Ether Square. Uh, I'll put him in the Twitter. I'm actually meeting up with him soon, so we'll, we'll, you'll get, you guys will get to see some content on that on YouTube. Uh, that's all that Palantir was working with a lot of different companies, and Wendy's, Pfizer's, General Motors, and Comcast were the big ones there. The way he did this was he just tracked backlinks in Google that had the Foundry username in them, and when you went to them, if it was like, I don't know, uh, let's say Google at dot foundry.com, the link would expire. It wouldn't work. But if you went to like Wendy's dot foundry.com, uh, it would, it would work and it would take you to like a username login section. And then you match that with the job descriptions that Wendy's is looking for, like Wendy's HQ, which is that we want someone who's skilled in Foundry or Foundry. You put two and two together. You're like, Oh, <laughs> these people are working with Palantir. Like it's just very obvious. So uh, some really, really big names and companies were released when that dossier came out. I'll put that in the description, but Wendy's, Pfizer, General Motors, and Comcast were the big ones that stood out to me. Okay, then January 5th, we had Palantir get it, getting a $25 million deal with a South Korean giant or Hyundai Heavy Industries. Now, this was an amazing, amazing deal. The reason for this was because Hyundai... Um, or I'm, I'm definitely saying the wrong, but Hyundai, I, I get flamed in the comments all the time. I always mess up that name, but let's just say Hyundai Heavy Industries is in South Korea and they have the largest ship manufacturing um, port in the entire world, right? So a lot of the world's ships that are created go through their industry or go through their, go through their supply chains. And a lot of the subcontractors and vendors that work with them also work with their industries. Now, this is important because Palantir basically is partnering with them to create a Skywise type of platform. Skywise is the platform Palantir created with Airbus. And Airbus, this was back in 2017, Airbus basically wanted a like full stop, one stop shop of suite of products that was basically going to allow them to manage airplanes, manage marketing airplanes, manage supply chain of airplanes, manage how the airplanes are working in the sky with the FAA. Like there's a lot of different dynamics for like, how can we make the airplane process from manufacturing to refueling to getting customers on the, on, on the airplane and getting them to their destination as efficient as possible. And Palantir created that entire suite of products for Skywise uh, that was called Skywise in combination with Airbus. And the, it was able to become an industry standard now. And now we have like documents that United Airlines is using it and a bunch of this other stuff. So that is the same type of model that Palantir is creating with Hyundai Heavy Industries. And they're building a ship building platform. So just like they built an airplane building platform, uh, sort of powered by data analytics, that's the exact same thing they're building for ship building. And because they're the largest manufacturer in the world of ships, they also have to get rid of ships. It's an entire process to get rid of a ship and to create a ship. There's a lot of supply chains and logistics involved. So Palantir creating that platform can pay off really, really well over the next five years, especially with all the exposure they're getting in the South Korean region to all of these other third-party vendors and manufacturers that are going to be using Palantir and its platform. Okay, another deal that happened, not very specific to Palantir, but January 13th, a Palantir Foundry for Builders company raised $42 million in a Series B funding of venture capital. This is important because Peter Thiel, who is the co-founder of Palantir, joined the board of that company. That company's name is Chapter. They're, they are a data-driven uh, Medicare plan recommendation system. So like you give your data to them, they interpret that data, and then they give recommendations on which Medicare plan you should potentially choose. I didn't even know that could be that big of a business, but apparently data literally is the new oil. <laughs> so they got valued at $42 million. The reason this was important for Palantir is because this was one of the first times I've heard of a foundry for builders company, um, which is like their, their, their program of like having uh, uh, their, their software integrated within like these startups that really aren't successful yet, but at least they're like utilizing foundries. So they're getting a lot of exposure to the startup community. And if those startups explode, then obviously they're going to be major clients of Palantir. Uh, th that, that startup raised $42 million. So it was really significant to me that a foundry for builders startup on the backs of using Palantir integrated within the entirety of their organization, especially given their organization runs off of data-driven decision-making as the core value proposition for the product that they offer raised $42 million. I mean, like that to me is a pretty big deal. That doesn't mean the company is going to be super successful, but that does mean that they use Palantir essentially to raise that money, right? Because if they didn't have Palantir, their product might not have been that successful, which means they don't get $42 million. So I thought that was pretty significant news for a Foundry for Builders company actually being able to raise big money. Okay, next piece of news. This actually happened on January 4th, 2021 or 2022, but I, uh, I covered it on January 23rd. Palantir SPAC investment in Weijo secured a deal with Microsoft. Now, Microsoft was already an investor in Weijo, but they created a new neural edge AI product, which at its core is just another connected vehicle data product for uh, customers. Let me actually read from their PR real quick. Weijo's new solution, Weijo Neural Edge, controls the flow of data from vehicles through edge processing in the car itself. 
Uh, we just migration to Azure, Microsoft Azure, as the sole platform for its scale data offering is already well underway. And now we just developing its patent pen pending edge technology by throttling the data at the edge of the vehicle. We, we Joe natural edge reduced the data flow to only 20% of its maximum while at no point reducing the quality and potential of the data for real world applications, such as vehicle to vehicle communications. So the sensors that are on your electric car that Weijo is getting data from is able to compress it and process it at a 20% more efficient speed and time, given they're using Microsoft Azure's platform, which is where the partnership really comes in, uh, without sacrificing quality of those sensors, because you can't sacrifice quality because if you know it's an electric car and it has to be autonomously driving and it sacrifices quality because of the processing time, that could be the difference between life or death, right? So it's a very, very important special product. And this is a Palantir SPAC investment that was able to secure this new product offer with Microsoft. To me, I thought this was a pretty phenomenal deal because just being a, a small startup, we is like a $4 stock is basically like a penny stock getting a deal with Microsoft. I mean, it shows so much potential going forward in the future. And, you know, they're building a product that a lot of other car manufacturers are going to have to use if you're not named Tesla, which is a pretty big market opportunity. So for Palantir to have the partnership with Weijo, that made a lot of sense to me as well. Okay. Next thing that happened on January 16th, Palantir was awarded four new patents. Uh, the video of this, I'll, I'll put in the description, but the patents essentially were around the concept of of, of data management in relationship to ontology. Now, ontology is a little bit of a complicated thing to understand. I did a video on it a while back, but ontology, the way Palantir describes it, is the relational database for how a user interacts with data and how the systems and methods within a software that interprets that data interacts with the user. So there is a symbiotic relationship with the user inputting the data or understanding the data and the platform, the software interpreting the data, giving the analysis based upon the complex things that the software does with the data to the end user. Palantir got awarded four new patents. A lot of it was around AI. A lot of it was around machine learning. A lot of it was also around VR stuff. So, and ontology and data. All of it at the end of the day was around interpreting data analytics. They applied for these patents around 2017, 2018, and they were applied, they were granted four of them legally uh, in 2022, January, around 16, 17. That doesn't mean these patents are like the best thing in the world. They're going to stop all these competitors from going against Palantir, but that does mean they have legal precedence to take action with their patents because it's patent pending technology that is not pending anymore because they were officially granted it. Next, Palantir on January 19, 2022, uh, created a new partnership to transform supply chains. This was in combination with with Matriana and DataWorks. These are in these are Canadian companies in combination or in partnership with the Canadian Innovation of uh, or, uh, Center of Innovation. So these were specifically focused on auto retailers and their supply chains and a lot of other supply chains, but auto retailers were the focus. Uh, Palantir was going to be implementing their technology in a lot of third-party contractors and vendors uh, in relationship to the other data company called Think Data that was able to provide them a lot of data analytics around the logistics specifically in Canada. Not a major, major deal from a financial perspective, but to get more exposure to the Canadian markets and to work with some of these downstream companies that are not Fortune 500, but are still getting exposure to Palantir Foundry, specifically in the supply chain niche. This was also an amazing deal for them on January 16th. And on January 14, 2022, Palantir launched their version of Amazon AWS certificates, which was basically an internal certification program. So Foundry is a flat flagship software that one day hopefully is, is going to be used by every major organization in the world for data analysis and data analytics, just like AWS is for cloud computing and hosting. Uh, if you have an AWS certification, which means you've like gone through exams and training and you've like skilled and you've, you've like, like answered a bunch of questions correctly and you know how to work with AWS, you're much more attractive as an employee, as a, as a person to be hired by employers because they know that you know how to be certified and work with AWS, which is integrated in a lot of organizations throughout the world. For Palantir to be able to normalize Foundry to the point where people that want to be data engineers, data scientists, and, and work in data analytics positions to have the capacity to be certified in Foundry so that employers already know that they know what they're doing, which makes it easier to hire them, just normalizes the platform more. It develops more of a developer community, and it allows Foundry to be one of those major platforms that if you can get certified in it, you have better job prospecting abilities, which means obviously other companies are using Foundry because if they want you to be certified in it, it's a mainstream platform that's being used in a variety of organizations. So it's only internally right now. So companies can offer the ability to get certified. It's not external to the public yet. But once that becomes external, I would say within the next year and a half, even maybe sooner than that, then there's a lot of potential for a lot more people, a lot more developers to get their hands on Foundry to be able to actually know how to use it and then apply to more jobs in places that are using Foundry a lot more often. And on January 13th, Palantir unveiled a new electric vehicle charging operating system in combination with their SPAC that we talked about before, 
Weijo. So Palantir unveiled a new product offering for electric vehicle charging stations and the operating system for those electric vehicle charging stations to operate. The sort of TL TLDR on this is that electric vehicle charging stations don't operate like a traditional gas station. They have network operators, they have municipalities, they have cities, they have electricity um, 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 uh, electricity companies to be able to get the electric uh, electricity from to be able to charge the cars so like PSNG is, PS &G is a good example. They have to communicate with a lot of different stakeholders that are involved along with be effective at actually charge the car uh, if, for, for the, the, that, from the electricity that they're getting so that it effectively goes into the nozzle and like makes the car have an actual range. Tesla's supercharger network is phenomenal on this and makes Tesla's very reliable, but other electric vehicles don't really have that same reliability. So there's got to be a lot of software involved in sort of a centralized suite that these electric charging stations are able to use so that they can communicate with another, whether you're in California at some electric charging station, doing a road trip down to New York at an electric charging station. The communication process between those and the communication process between those charging stations in this hyper-specific locations that they are in, along with the national locations that they're in, because they're all taken from the national electric grid, is really what creates uh, this product offering. We just is a leader in connected vehicle data. Palantir is a leader in data analytics. So the combination of both of those together to be able to create this product offering could mean that there is a good chance that the EV market for electric charging stations, that Palantir also invested in Tritium, which is a SPAC for, that creates uh, electric vehicle charging stations. They've sold 6,000 worldwide and they're being used in London right now. It means there's a big potential for this market to have Palantir's sticky fingers all over it in the next five years. Okay, two more updates. On uh, January... 26 Palantir partner Andril Industries received a billion dollar contract from the defense from the Department of Defense. Now, Andril Industries is a hardware company that uses Palantir for a lot of the software to build their hardware. And for them to get a billion dollars from the Department of Defense because they create these like counterterrorism drone uh, hardware machinery is a really good thing for Palantir. Not only because Palantir is probably going to get a bit of that billion dollars just in terms of like their renewal of contracts with Andrew Industries, but because if they have relationships with contractors and subcontractors that the Department of Defense is working with, they only strengthen their relationship with the Department of Defense by by ultimately be trying to become the natural operating system for the entire DoD, right? Because if every contractor that the DoD works with that creates hardware is using Palantir's data analytics to make their hardware make sense, right, from a software perspective, then that means Palantir's relationship with the DoD gets stronger, it means Palantir has more leverage, and it means more lucrative governmental contracts are likely to go towards Palantir's way, because why would you, if you're the Department of Defense, give it to anyone else when all the contractors you work with are working with Palantir? It's just a more seamless relationship. So at that point, their partner getting a billion dollars, very good news for Palantir. Okay, finally, on uh, January 28th, 2022, which was just a couple of days ago, Palantir unveiled three new things. Number one, they are hiring a former sales exec from Oracle. His name is Philip Matu. He was part of the uh, Asia Africa region to be able to make sure, and European region to be able to make sure that they got about $16 billion of revenue at Oracle, where he was a vice president of sales. He was skilled at developing sales teams to be able to actually scale the product that Oracle was offering. And that led to about $16 billion of sales. That was the first update. Number two, uh, they hire a thousand new employees. That was a LinkedIn update that they're looking for a thousand new people. And number three, they're expanding into Germany. So a couple of things on this. Uh, the hire for Philip was awesome because you want a seasoned sales executive who was able to actually produce results at another major you know, software technology company like Oracle to want to work with Palantir. And one of the quotes that he said in the press release was that he believes that the demand for Palantir's operating system is exponential. And he believes that they have the chance to truly become the operating system for the modern enterprise. So the guy who did $16 billion of revenue and sales as a result of his efforts in a particular region, now using that same region with all the connections he's made and all the experience he's had to bring that business, hopefully to Palantir. Very, very good sign. Very, very good hire. And number two, they're hiring a thousand people. A lot of these, I think, are going to be sales roles, which makes sense because you just hired a big vice president of sales from a former technology company. So at that point, I think a lot of th they're ramping up the ability for them to, to, to get sales and marketing. They're hiring a thousand people. A lot of those roles are going to be sales oriented, which means a lot of more sort of door to door. Hey, do you want to buy Palantir? Stuff is going to start happening. And number three, they're expanding into Germany. Now, this is not only cool because Carp knows Germany, uh, German, how to speak German, and he got his PhD in Germany. Uh, and, and, you know, we all love Carp. But one of the cool things about this is Germany is one of the biggest center is for supply chain. Uh, China is a big place for supply chain, but Germany is also a huge place for a lot of the raw materials that go into creating the water bottles or pencils that you buy that come from China. As a result, 
with Omicron and the pandemic happening and also supply chains not being that optimized, Tesla and Apple just had their earnings calls and they pretty much admitted, hey, we're growing, but these supply chains are really constraining, constraining our growth means that there is a level of, and Tesla actually has a factory in Berlin, right? So like supply chains are really big in, in the Germany region. Uh, that means supply chains do have to be more optimized and made more efficient. And Palantir being able to penetrate that region, it's the second account outside of the France account, the France location that they have in the EU, means they're able to expand more into the EU, get more uh, market share in the EU, get more exposure to the EU, and also be able to develop relationships with a lot of other companies that exist in the EU that are primarily rooted in supply chain, logistics, contracting, being vendors, et cetera, et cetera. Those partnerships can be super substantial for Palantir. They just have to be in Germany to be able to make those partnerships. And hiring a 1,000 people, getting a new vice president of sales, and expanding into Germany, to me, is an amazing sign for them again. So those are all the updates for Palantir. I don't know how long this video is. I'm going to try to get it down, but I think that's like at least 10 or 11 deals that I mentioned. A lot of stuff has happened in the past. Oh, one more I forgot to mention. The Army Vantage deal. They secured $116 million from the Army. This is around December 17th, 2021. Um, so this was this was part of an ongoing contract. They won the third year of that deal. So they were already supposed to get it, but they had to prove that they were worthy of getting it. And the Army Vantage officially secured that they were worthy of getting it on December 17th, 2021. So another $116 million contract for Palantir. As you can see, uh, a lot of stuff has been happening over the past couple months. Company's been making a lot of progress. Uh, if you're an invested shareholder in the company and you're following what the company is doing, it's 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 kind of hard not to be impressed by all of the moves that they've been making. And we expect that, you know, as a high growth technology company that's trying to grow, you expect them to be able to make a lot of moves to get this stuff done. But to see them do what they've done rel in a relatively short amount of time in terms of new partnerships, new operations, new product offerings, and really new lucrative contracts from the from from the government. It, it it helps you it helps you feel better at night about the investment because you see that they're really trying to to ultimately go for it. So those are my thoughts. Let me know any thoughts you have in the comments. Let me know if you missed anything and let me know what were or let me know if I missed anything. And let me know what were your favorite deals that were announced out of the eleven or twelve that I mentioned uh, over the past couple of months. Which ones got you the most excited and which ones also allowed you to have more optimism and conviction in your investment in the company? Thank you guys for watching. My name is Bit. I'll see you in the next one.